A new CBS YouGov poll out this morning that was taken after the debate finds that 72 percent of voters now say they do not think President Biden has the mental or cognitive health to serve as president. Here with me now is one of the top officials in the Democratic Party, a close ally of President Biden, former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, what is your reaction to that poll? 72 percent of voters say they don't think that the president is fit mentally or cognitively to be president. Well, what do they think about the other guy? Uh, do they think that he has the integrity to be president after that performance? Uh, let us just go, let us not make a judgment about a presidency on one, um, one debate. Let's talk about what it means to people in their lives. And that's why you're not seeing much change in the polls on this. The difference between Joe Biden and uh, the former president is so clear. If you are a woman and you care about your reproductive freedom and your health, and women do, you see a complete difference between enforce a woman's right to choose on the part of Joe Biden and a, a ban on abortion with the other guy. If you care about... Uh, that's a lie. Actually, technically, uh, under Trump, women still have the option to choose. Right. Um, I think you should let the child live, but that's just my personal opinion. But Trump said, hey, it's not up to the big brother government. We're going to throw it back down to your local states and let you decide on a personal level. How do you guys feel about this? And I think even in one interview, Trump had mentioned uh, the vote that happened. I believe it was in Ohio. I believe in Ohio. Uh, and people voted to keep abortion. And so it is what it is, right? I've always stated how I think this whole deal should play out. I'm not going to bore you guys with that again. I've told you guys how I think Trump should do it. And so far he's implementing that, which is also crazy. Like I feel like a lot of the things that I say, Trump eventually comes out and says the same thing. I'm not saying that, uh, you know, I know it all, or you know what I mean? I don't have any inside track or anything like that, but I, I just feel like it's common sense. You know, this is the way that you have to play it. This is the way that you have to do this or do that. You know, like the too big to rig. I had said that in its own video, right? I got proof. I, I had said that like three weeks to a month before he had said it. I was like, this is the way we win. And then like a month later, he had said something like that. I'm not saying that he got the idea from me or he gets his ideas from me. Uh, or anything like that, but like I said, I just believe a lot of the things are common sense, like this whole abortion thing. Trump's like, hey, it's not up to me. It's not up to big brother government, nor will I be stepping in, and I, I think that's personally the, the right stance at this time, at this point in time, right, because we saw and we've seen that uh, abortion can shift things, and if you want to save kids, you have to be in a position to actually save them. Losing an election doesn't put you in that position. So people can argue, oh, Rich, no, we, we can't have that type of stance. Yeah, and you're not going to be in office. So good luck saving kids not being in office. <laughs> the goal should be to get in office. And uh, that, that is obviously what Trump is doing. So I commend him. I salute it. And uh, I believe it's the common sense uh, way to go about things, right? job creation in America, 15 million more jobs created by Joe Biden, the worst job performance record since Herbert Hoover for the other guy. If uh, that was because of a pandemic. Let's get that straight. If you're concerned about saving the planet, you're a young person, you're caring about the planet and its future. Joe Biden, the first person in the Congress to pass a resolution uh, to study the climate change in the 80s, even before I was in Congress. A guy who goes to the, the um, uh, fossil fuel industry and says, give me a billion dollars so I can reverse what happened in the IRA right. uh, to but save the planet. The list goes on and on, whether you're talking about guns and the rest. And 16 Nobel laureates said when it comes to inflation, if the other guy gets elected, inflation will soar because of his uh, fiscal policies. So it, it's not about performance in terms of a debate. It's about performance in a presidency. And I want you to know that the, the fact is that the reaction to the lies of Donald Trump is something that mm. maybe TV isn't focusing on, but people are. And to have a debate where you have to spend half your time 
negating what he said because he has no nothing knows nothing yeah, about we, the truth. On one side of the on one side of the screen, you have integrity. The other side, you have dishonesty. Yeah, and we we have definitely been pointing out uh, the about thirty falsehoods that we heard uh, from uh, former President Trump. But what you just did, Madam Speaker, uh, was make the argument for Joe Biden's reelection in a way that he did not on Sorry. Thursday night. Isn't no. that a problem? I don't, I don't think it's a problem. It's a bad night. Uh, it's, I see everything as an opportunity. Okay, you want to contrast what these people can do in a, in a debate if you're not even telling the truth, or do you want to talk about what it means to you in your life when this person becomes president? This president, look, he, he, he lied about January 6th. This was a horrible event in our country's history. He was an ins president of the United States who instigated an insurrection. He tries to blame it on... Uh, no, he didn't. He literally said peacefully and patriotically. Uh, Keyword, peacefully. But, you know, as always, Democrats fail to mention that part. They also never show his speech when they talk about this kind of stuff, which... Is a telltale sign that they're lying about something. They they say Trump said this. Well, show us full speech. Show the full thing. Show a minute before he said it and show a minute after. Show the whole thing, right? They they only want to like clip little things and show you just this little snippet. No, show a minute before he said what you claim he said and show a minute after he said what you claim he said. Show the whole thing so we get all the context, all right? Goodness gracious. On me, yeah, I planned my own assassination when he was sitting on his butt in the White House, not sending the National Guard and lying about it on the show. And people, people are, are well-meaning. They, I had one of your reporters say, did he really send the National Guard? No, if they don't even know, then how can we make a... I uh, a judgment about how other people evaluate yeah. a, a presentation. I, so th this is a dangerous person as opposed to a person who, again, saved our country from COVID. The first bill we passed, shots in the arms, money in pocket, people in, in jobs, children in school. This president with his denial and, M Madam and Speaker. delay caused people to die. Yeah, and I, I completely understand what you're doing and you are making the arguments uh, that you are hoping that, that Democratic voters listen to about why Donald Trump is, is bad and shouldn't be put back in the White House. But the reality is there are still a lot of concerns that Joe Biden is the person to get you to that point, to making sure that Donald Trump is not back in there. No. Some prominent columnists, several newspaper editorial boards are just simply calling for Biden to step aside for the good of the country. Tom Friedman, a friend of President Biden's, wrote the following. He wrote, yeah. Joe Biden, a good man and a good president, has no business running for re-election. If he insists on running and he loses to Trump, Biden and his family and his staff and party members who enabled him will not be able to show their faces. What do you say to that? Should, is there any part of you that believes that President Biden should step aside? I want you to know I came home to California, south and north, and people are for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. They have some judgment about a person who sat on that, uh, stood on that stage and lied, 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 if you're just talking about the debate. I'm respectful of some of the opinions that people have, but I also am respectful of the grassroots. My people are very much Biden, Kamala Harris. And this is an opportunity for Joe Biden to go out there and show he has the stamina and the rest. And by the way, while the press, and for some reason they don't, there are uh, uh, health care professionals who think that, that uh, Trump has dementia, that his connection, uh, his thoughts do not go together. Uh, not only that he just lies, he doesn't even know the truth. So if we're just talking about... <laughs> Listen, Nancy, I think you need to slow down on the drinks, okay? You, you've been sipping a little too much. <laughs> this, is, this is honestly hilarious watching her just say all of this BS right now.
about mental acuity, let's be fair about it. I don't think Tom Friedman thinks that, uh, that Donald Trump should be president of the United States. And uh, you know, while, uh, while he may be saying we're enablers, we see Joe Biden up close. We know how uh, attuned he is to the issues, how informed he is. And I debate with him about uh, legislation and the, not debate, but discuss it with him. He's right there. So in any case, it was a bad night. Let's not sugarcoat that. It was a bad night. It was a great presidency. And that's what the American people have to choose. Did she have a Joe Biden moment right there? Y'all let me know. <laughs> a, 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 a night where somebody's going to just misrepresent the facts completely and then you're on your guard. Uh, the other person has to negate that. Or, again, it was a bad night. Let's move on from that. Oh. It's all an opportunity. Uh, our, our members have, have been very thoughtful. They're very concerned about a president who would lie the way they do. And then the Republicans well, let me ask just go embrace those misrepresentations. Let me ask you about those members, because there are um, House and Senate Democrats who are worried that Joe Biden could be a drag on their races and could ultimately cost you the Senate maybe even the ability to retake the House. Do you have any of those concerns? We definitely will win the House of Representatives. It may come as a surprise to you, but when they saw the performance of Trump, donors doubled down and said, we absolutely have to have the Congress. So it, it, kind, of, it kind of had an opposite effect in terms of the races. The members are always concerned about the top of the ticket. We're, you know, that's just the way it is. They're always concerned about the top of the ticket. Are they more concerned now? But I don't think we... Well, we'll see. You, you can't make a judgment after one night. We'll just see. As, as Hakeem has said, we'll have our discussions as we go, as we go forward. But how do, we, how do we walk away from a record of great performance on the part of this president with a promise to do more in terms of all the issues we talked about. And what we like to see at the bus and some of the women's caucus, womenomics, where women in the workplace, where we have family and medical leave, where we have affordable child care, where we have home health care uh, for women who are caregivers. Men are caregivers too, so that we can have a con uh, a, an economy where everyone participates to the fullest and children are cared for because it's all about the children. So it is, uh, it's difficult. Politics is difficult. It's never easy. And again, uh, members will make their own decision. It isn't, wouldn't be the first time in campaigns, as long as I've been involved since I was chair of the party in the 80s, that people have not said, I'm running my own race. I'm yeah. not being associated with you me or yeah. the top of the ticket. Yeah, just real quick, because you mentioned that you have been a party chair before. Is there even a, a mechanism yeah. that you think would work if President Biden did decide to step aside? You know, the campaign says that uh, it would cause weeks of chaos and internal food fighting. Well, again, there's nothing as well as just as Joe Biden getting up and, and taking the ball over the finish line. Something else could be chaotic. I, I don't say that to say that could never happen, because it might. I don't mean now. I mean, in history, it could. But understand this. This is really important for people to understand. Joe Biden has won the nomination. He has won the nomination. It but is not, a, is not it, officially. He hasn't been, the roll call hasn't happened. Yeah, but no, but the, that roll call ha has been happening around the country. Mm because of the timing of the election. It's a very different year. Got it. And so you would have to undo the nomination to do something else. That would not be a reason to do it or not do it. The question is, Joe Biden's decision to go forward is a decision that we will all embrace because of the record he has and the uh, performance that will come with it. And the contrast, you know, a woman's life and job... Okay, okay, okay. That's enough. That's enough. I just, just, just. Did y'all notice her shaking though? Was it? Was that just me?
Y'all let me know in the comment section. I, I I just wanted to let it play. I didn't want to like interject a whole whole lot, you know, because it was a bit of a longer clip. So I wanted to just let it play out, and you know, I was gonna say most of what I wanted to say towards the end. Um, uh, now what I did want to also state was I love that she mentioned uh Joe Biden not being pulled off because. They always talk about democracy, 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 and they've been lying to us these past three years, telling us that Joe Biden was fine. And Democrat voters went out and voted for Joe in the primary to have them as their candidate. Um, so for them to simply replace him and then just inside their party decide who's going to be next that ain't democracy, right? Because that's always what they preach about. I know we live in a constitutional republic for somebody that's going to comment that. I understand that. But I'm just saying, Democrats always talk about democracy, democracy, democracy. So if you're going to replace Joe, you're going to have to have another national vote in order to replace him. And if you don't, that ain't democracy. Goodness gracious, I have like eyelash in my eye or something. Um, also, one issue that they will run into is if they don't, uh, put Kamala at the top of the ticket, then they're also going to have another problem on their hands. And Kamala has not been a name mentioned that I've heard. I've heard Gretchen Whitmer. I've heard obviously Gavin Newsom. I've heard uh, um, uh, Pete, Pete Buttig Buttigieg. Uh, but Kamala Harris has not been a name. And I wonder how they're going to navigate that one. Because I think even if she makes a statement, oh, I'm stepping down, blah, blah, blah. I think a lot of people are going to see through that. And they're going to see that they pushed her out. And because they've preached about all this diversity, 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 black people, black people, black people, right? Uh, talk, there's going to be a lot of folks who are going to be angry about them not putting Kamala at the top of the ticket or pushing Kamala out. even if, Or even if they brought in, because I, uh, I forgot who said this. But I did see one person say, bring in Gavin as president and have Kamala as his vice president. Well, I don't think that's going to work either. Because this is the monster that they created. They always talked about diversity, diversity, diversity. Uh, um, representation, right? Well, if you don't push the black woman, black woman, right? <laughs> I want to put that in air quotations. Um, if you don't put her at the top of the ticket, and you just take another white man and put him at him him at the top of the ticket ahead of the black woman. Well, we know how that's going to go. So honestly, I don't think they're going to be able to replace Joe. Um, and if they do, it's just going to bump up Trump even more or tank their support even more than it already has tanked. So uh, I, I think I think they're in a catch 22. They lose and they lose. But that's just my humble opinion on it. What do y'all think? I know, of course, Nancy's going to, you know, sip her wine and get on TV and mumble and bumble and stumble and freeze like Joe Biden and be up there shaking, you know, uh, trying to defend it all. Of course she is because we've watched her in mainstream media lie to us for the past three years saying Joe Biden was fine until we saw that he clearly wasn't. <laughs> I mean, we knew that, but a lot of America didn't. Um Actually, I was talking to someone uh, about a conversation that they had with someone else. And that other person is, you know, a leftist. They're a Democrat. And they were surprised at how terrible Joe Biden is. You know, so I think that says a lot. There's a lot of Democrats in this country that had no clue Joe Biden was that bad. No clue. Yeah, I know. It's shocking. It's shocking because we all know. But I, I do think it's probably because there's a lot of people in this country who don't really care about politics a whole lot. They're just Democrats because they think they're supposed to be Democrats. Um, and when they do watch the news or when they do pay attention to anything political, I should say, it's from the news. And we know the news has been lying. So if that's all you're getting, seeing Joe Biden on that stage last week is probably extremely shocking. So that's what I think. But as always, y'all stay safe out there. Peace and love. I'm out.